Zoox is developing a better way to go from A to B in dense urban areas. And we're doing this through autonomous technology, ground up vehicle design, as well as the service to back that up. One thing that most OEMs are doing when they approach designing a new vehicle is they iterate on something that's been done before. That's good. I mean, there's lots of history there. It means evolution rather than revolution. But it's very rare that you get the chance in an automotive career to start from a blank sheet of paper. This was that opportunity. And that's because it doesn't make sense to take what's been developed for the last 100 years to solve you know, conventional human driving. It doesn't make sense to take that platform and to use that platform for what comes as the third generation of autonomous driving. Zoox has chosen to develop a vehicle from the ground up for autonomy because we firmly believe simply putting sensors onto a current passenger car is fundamentally flawed. It's fundamentally flawed in that the current geometry, shape if you like, of a vehicle doesn't allow you to place sensors in the optimum position. So when you start sitting back saying, well, what do I need to enable autonomy? I need EV, I need optimum sensor positions, and I need a large battery to be able to deploy for the day. If you take all those three factors, you have to develop a vehicle from the ground up, leapfrogging the rest of the industry, and go straight for that third generation of vehicle, which is EV and autonomous. Look into the future, solving it now, rather than iterating on the current platform. Looks good. Fast. Beautiful. Designing a vehicle or a product really for autonomous ride sharing is definitely different than a personally owned vehicle. We understand first and foremost who the vehicle is going to be used for, and then we design the vehicle for that person and the environment. And the way we're using it for denser mobility as a ride handling service, we really want to understand what the customer's needs are. And for those customers in those areas, it's pretty short rides, and so they're hopping on and off. And really we want to give them a safe, consistent ride experience. At the same time, something that's really delightful. Part of taking advantage of self-driving technology is letting humans interact the way we're supposed to interact, and that's face-to-face. -face. So we've developed kind of communal seating. If you're by yourself, you have plenty of space. If you're with friends or family, you're going to be sitting close to them and interacting with them the way you should be. And that's really how we designed that vehicle to be. We really wanted it to be human-focused, to be able to take advantage of what self-driving technology can give us on the interior of the vehicle. The vehicle is symmetrical in its design because our focus is on the interior. And on the exterior, we want to have consistent design for our sensor pods. And then we also have the exposed wheels, kind of the more of a carriage type of visual. One, it makes the vehicle a little bit small on the outside. It's also just very maneuverable. So we have front and rear steer that allows us to have a very tight turning circle. And bi-directionality offers us some unique advantages in certain scenarios, say a parking lot pickup and drop off, a parking garage pickup and drop off, or a hotel pickup and drop off, where the vehicle can just drive in it can stop, it can be there waiting for you, you can get in in the right direction and then it can just take off. So we're just reducing three-point turns or U-turns and making your ride more efficient. To be able to drive safely in the city, you need unrivaled visibility, if you like. So our sensor suite that we have, which is a combination of LiDAR, radar, cameras, need to be able to see 360 degrees around the vehicle, but more importantly, need to be able to see as early as possible. So as we come up to traffic junctions, as we come up to overtake vehicles, you'll notice we've positioned the sensors to give that visibility as early as possible. That means that our vehicle is seeing more than the human can see, and that enables it to deploy and operate safely. Our current L3 fleet, our Toyota Highlanders, they're deployed already, operating in the cities, driving in the cities, that's all visible online. Anyone can jump online and take a look at that. The sensor positions on those vehicles are almost identical to the sensor positions we have on our L5 vehicle. And that's super important because it means that the testing that's been done in the mega cities is basically a substitute of our, our own vehicle being in that situation. And geometrically identical sensor positions means that any development that we do on the L3 Highlanders and any of the driving we do is directly transferable to our vehicle. So the vehicle you see behind me here, these are our first vehicles built off our production tooling. We went through the prototyping phase on the previous generation. We proved out that design. 
We're now building these vehicles off those production tools, and these vehicles will go through the same rigorous testing and certification to the uh, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. The vehicle is designed to operate up to 75 miles an hour, which means that it's highway capable. And it can do that in either direction, being fully bi-directional. And that's been proven out on private test tracks. The next few years at Zooks is going to be super exciting. The first step, obviously, is we get to reveal the vehicle and show the world what we've been working on. The team's going to be super motivated by that. You know, we were one of the first to commit to a ground-up vehicle design to support self-driving technology. I think that's helped accelerate us and allow us to get our vehicle on public roads sooner than maybe the public had imagined.